chapter three, I think, is the friendliest of the four chapters that we do. Um, most students that put reasonable effort in will get an A on this test, and even some students that don't put like a maximum amount of effort might still stumble through and get an A uh, on the chapter three test. At some point, the calculator that I've been using through the videos you're going to need to have in chapter three for the last couple sections because there's some stuff that we do that that's really kind of not fun to do without the calculator but pretty easy to do with a calculator so um the first example i'm going to do is just creating something called a frequency distribution and a frequency distribution really is a, just a two column table to organize data so we're going to deal with we're going to be given data and we're going to organize that data in a two column table. Uh, all right. No, no, no. Six, so let me just jump into this. 64 families were asked the question how many children do you have? The data collected below. The data <laughs> collected is shown in the table below. Construct a frequency distribution of the following data. So super easy to do. So each one of these numbers represents the number of children a family that was asked of the 64 have. A frequency distribution is just a two column table that organizes the data. You have lots of flexibility when you create a frequency distribution from data. I chose to make my frequency distribution have two columns, which we generally do, and then I made the left column the number of children that the families had. So the a lot of families had zero children, some had one, and the most number of children any family had was nine. So in my left column I wrote the numbers zero through nine, meaning having anywhere between zero and nine children. And then the right hand column I wanted to describe um, the numbers in it, and what I did is I went through for each of the number of children, like for zero children, I counted up the number of families that had zero children. Apparently there were eight families with zero children. So next to the zero in the number of children column, I wrote eight, and that represented the number of families that had eight children. So for each of the different numbers of children, I just went through my table and I counted. So there's eight right there, families that had one children plus another four, so there were 12 families that had one children. So one child. So next to the one number of children, I did 12 families. Next to the two, there's four there. Another eight makes 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There were 17 families that had two children, so I put a two next to the 17, and you could do that. This is not particularly hard. Um, so what's required when you're making, making a frequency distribution is to have two columns, you're going to give some sort of names to the columns and fill in the numbers. And it's going to become reasonably obvious on how to do this. Um, it's not required, but a lot of times I'll make a total of the right-hand column, but not a total of the um, left-hand column. So what I did is I added up all the numbers, 8 plus 12 plus 17 plus 11, all the way down. It added up to 64. So this would be a frequency distribution for this data that represented 64 families answer to the question of how many children they had. So let's do another frequency distribution and in this frequency distribution each individual response, as in terms of the number of children, I gave a different row in the frequency distribution. Sometimes doing that would give you too many rows and the frequency distribution would be gigantic. So sometimes we might group the data to make, make it the distribution not as long as it might be if we don't group the data. So, so I'll say often we group the data in classes to provide information about a distribution that might be difficult to observe if it's ungrouped. So let's do an example of a grouped data. So I'm about to show you some data and the data is going to represent family incomes in thousands of dollars. We're rounded to the nearest hundred of 15 families, randomly selected families. So basically 15 families were asked what their 
total family income is in thousands of dollars and I'm going to construct a frequency distribution and I'm going to group the data a little bit rather than making 15 different numbers in my first column I'm going to group the data a, a bit and so look, how can I do a frequency distribution well I need to make two columns a two column table and the first column I might write um, what the income is and these numbers represent thousands of dollars so I'm going to write income in thousands and what the first what I'm told to do is make the first class or the first line 16 to 22 that tells me from 16,000 to 22,000 because the 16 and 22 represent thousand I need to make a second column I need to give it a title and I need to get a number in that second column the number I'm going to put is the number of families whose income was between 16 and 22,000 that family's going to count and that family's going to count. I don't see any other family whose income is in the range of 16 to 22,000. So in the right hand column next to 16 to 22, I'm going to write two for the two families that have income it's in that brackets. And I need a name for this column. I'm just going to call this the number of families. So what this says that there were two families that had income between 16 and 22,000 should be reasonably easy to figure out what the next quote unquote classes I call this right here 16 to 22 I'm gonna call the first class to start the second class I'm gonna add one to the endpoint here so from 22 I'm gonna go up to 23 and then I have to figure out um, what the next number is it's really easy for me to do I'm just going to take the numbers in the first class they are six apart I'm going to take that number six and add it to the 23 to get my second class 23 plus 6 is 29 so my second class is going to be 23 to 29 and I'm going to go through and look for any family whose income is between 23 and 29 thousand inclusive. I'm going to count the 29,000, this 25 that represents 25,000, that 29, that 25, and that 24. All of those um, five incomes that I highlighted would qualify for incomes between 23 and 29,000. I'm going to create my third class here in a second. For my third class, I need to take this 29, bump it up one, I'm going to bump it up to 30, and then I'm going to add the same six and make it 30 to 36 for my third class. And I'm going to go through the data and find any income between 30 and 36,000 inclusive. So I'm going to count that, 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 and that. I think I'm going to count those four. They're all between 30 and 36,000 inclusive. So I'm going to put a four. Next class, which will be the fourth class, is going to start at 37. I'm going to add 6 to 37 and get 43. So any incomes between 37,000 and 43,000 inclusive, I'm going to count. So I'm going to count that, that, and that. So I believe there's going to be three there. Last class, which is going to be the fifth class, is going to go between 44 and 50. I add one to the 43, then I add 6 to the 44. And there's only one number that I haven't looked at yet, this 50. And I'm going to put a 1 next to that. This is technically enough, but I generally, when I do a frequency distribution, and that's what this is, this two column table, I would call a frequency distribution. This is a frequency distribution that's grouped, that has grouped data, as opposed to the first frequency distribution that I did that had ungrouped data. This, because each, each of the numbers in the left-hand column was just an individual number, not a range of numbers, this is a frequency distribution with ungrouped data. This, because 
the um, there's a range we call it a frequency distribution with grouped data and I usually fill in this total row at the bottom I should add up the numbers 2 plus 5 is 7 7 plus 4 is 11 11 plus 3 is 14 14 plus 1 is 15 the reason I do this as much as anything is to make sure I don't miss a piece of data because in the description I was told that this table has the incomes of 15 families. If my number in this total was either more or less than 15, I would have known I'd had some sort of mistake. So that's absolutely everything that I needed to do for that frequency distribution. Unfortunately, not done because we're gonna ask some questions about this distribution that I'm gonna to need to answer. So. Let me look at the questions that I might ask about this particular frequency distribution. First question, what is the total of number of observations? The number of observations is just the number of families surveyed. So the number of observations for this frequency distribution or for this set of data is 15. That's an easy question. The next question kind of bugs me the way it's defined, but it is what it is. It says, what is the width of each class? And for me, it feels like the width of each class should be six because I added six to get from class to class, but that's not gonna be right. Because if I look at the class from 16 to 72, 22, I'm allowed to put the numbers 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22 in it. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different numbers I'm allowed to put in that class. The width of this cl class is gonna be seven. The easiest way to get the width of a class is to subtract any two numbers that are on top of each other in the table. They're all gonna subtract the same way. To find the width of each class, I could take the 23 that's the start of the second class minus the 16 that's the start of the first class. That will give me seven. I could take the 43 that's the ending of the fourth class minus the 36 that's the ending of the third class that's still going to give me seven so to find the width of each class you have to take the first you have to take uh, numbers that are on top of each other or in, connected to each other on the table and subtract them so any two numbers in this table that are connected if you subtract those two numbers you're going to get seven that's going to be considered the width of each class What is the midpoint of the third class? Midpoint is in some sense an average, and I need to know what class is the third class before I can answer this question. And we said that 16 to 22 was the first class, 23 through 29 was the second class, 30 through 36 is the third class. To find the midpoint of this class, which is the third class, you add up the numbers and divide by two. The lowest number in the third third class was 30. The highest number in the third class was 36. I'm going to add up those numbers and divide by 2. This is going to give me 66 over 2 and 66 over 2 is 33. So the midpoint of the third class is going to be 33. So to find the midpoint of a class you're just adding the lowest number in the class plus the highest number in the class and then dividing by two, you're finding the average of the two numbers in the class. Of course, you have to know which class is the third class and they just go in order, first, second, third, fourth. We have five classes in this one. Next question gets to a word that we actually haven't got to in this chapter yet, but we will get to. What is the modal class? The modal class is the class that has the most in the right-hand column, or the largest number in the right-hand column. In this particular distribution, the largest number in the right-hand column is five. So this frequency distribution has one modal class. It's the class from 23 to 29, because it's the class with the most observations. My answer, I could have just said 23 through 29 for my answer. When I typed it up, I said the modal class is the second class, which is 23 to 29. If this was a test question, if you just wrote 23 through 29 for an answer, it'd be fine. If there were two different um, classes that had 
a tie for the highest number of families. You could have a bimodal and you could write two different classes. So the, if there was another class that had five families and five was still the largest number of families, you'd include both classes in the answer. Oh, and what would be the class limits if that one more class was added? That's so easy. Um, I would take this 50 if I was adding a class, bump up that 50 to 51, and then I added six to get each of the numbers and, and I would just add six again and I would get 51 to 57. I would just, just construct a class just like I did all the previous classes. I stopped at 44 through 50 because the highest data point was 50. Hmm, I wonder if we're enough ready for the data already. I think maybe I'm just gonna jump into doing the, uh, the homework. And I'll walk through problem one with you. I have another example, but it feels like we maybe not need, don't need to do another example. So, yuck. So, this table for problem homework question one has the results of 56 grade IQ scores. So maybe 56 grade students were given an IQ test. The lowest IQ was 80. The highest IQ was 135. 100 is an average IQ. And... It turns out that 68% of all people have IQs between 85 and 115. And oh, I think it's like 95% of all people have IQs between 70 and 130. I'm adding 15 each time. If you have an IQ above 130, you're in the you know 95th percentile. If you have an IQ above 99, you're in the 99th percentile, meaning you have an IQ higher than 99% of all people but most people's IQ is you know, somewhere around 100. So I'm gonna try to organize this data into a frequency distribution, which is just a two column table. I certainly don't need to write frequency distribution on the top of my table, it's by default. I can tell what it is. So it's just gonna be a two column table and in the left-hand column, I need to give it a name, and I'm gonna say it's the IQ, or the IQ score. Let me start filling out that left-hand column. I'm told to make the first class 80 to 88. Easy enough to do. Now I'm gonna make the second class by adding one to the 88 and getting 89. And then these numbers are eight apart. 88 minus 80 is eight. I'm just gonna add eight to get the next. 89 to 97. Third class, I'm gonna start at 98. I'm gonna go 98 plus eight is 106. Fourth class, I'm gonna add one and get to 107. 107 plus eight is 115. Fifth class, add 1 to 115 and get 116, add 8 and get 124. Sixth class, add 1 to 124 and get 125, add 8 and get 133. I'm almost there. I only need to get up to 135. This is going to be the last class. I'm going to go from 134, add 8 and get 142. I'm going to make a room for the total. And just because I'm in the groove and I think I'm going to ask it, I'm going to figure out what the next class would be, even though I don't need it in my table. The next class, I'd add 1 to 142 and get 143, and then I'd add 8 to that and get 151. This is going to be what the next class would be, but I don't need it. But I think I ask it when we get to the um, questions parts of this. So this is the beginnings of my two-column table. My second column, I need to start totaling up, and I'm just gonna make this named, and I'm gonna say it's the number of students. If I don't mess up, the numbers in the right-hand column have to add up to 50 because there are 50 students that are represented. So I'm gonna go through and figure out the number of students that, that have each grouping of IQ or each class of IQ, put them in my table, and make sure those numbers add up to 50. So the first class is 80 to 88. I'm gonna choose those four students for it. I'm gonna put a four next to the number of students in my first class. Second class, I need to get up to 97. 
So I'm going to go, there's going to be 1, and another 5 is 6, and another 5 is 11, and another 5 is 16, and 1 is 17. If I, if I did that right, there's 17 students in the second class. Third class, 98 to 106. So I'm going to go all the way up to 106. There's 4, 9, 14, 15 that I just highlighted in the 100 to 106 class. And then 107 to 115, I'm going to go, there's 4 there. And another 4 there is going to make 8. 8. And then the 116 to 124, 1, 2, 3, 4 in that class. For the 125 to 133, just the 128 is in that class, so just a 1. And for the 134 to 142, just the 135 is in that class. Let me add these numbers up to make sure they add up to 50 in the right-hand column. So 4 plus 17 plus 15 plus 8 plus 4 plus 1 plus 1. If it doesn't add up to 50, or if it adds up more than 50, I made a mistake somewhere, but it added up perfectly to 50, so I feel good about my table or my frequency distribution. Now I need to answer the questions, or I know the answer to this. I was told there was 50 observations. The total of my right-hand column is 50. I feel good about the answer to that. Compute the width of each class. That's the nasty one, where you just take two consecutive numbers in the table and subtract them. To find the width of each class, I'm just going to take the first two numbers that are on top of each other and subtract them, and I'm going to say the width of each class is 9. Compute the midpoint of the third class. I need to know which class is the third class. 80 to 88 is the first class. 89 to 97 is the second class. 98 to 106 is the third class. To find the midpoint, I add up the numbers that start and end the class and divide by 2. So I'm going to do 98 plus 106 divided by 2. I think that's 102. I can kind of tell the middle of those two numbers. To do it in one quick computation on my calculator, if I want to do it quickly, I would put the numerator in a parentheses and then divide it by 2. And then I get the midpoint of that class as 102. But I could kind of tell that was the middle between 98 and 106. 102 is 4 bigger than 98, and it's 4 less than 106. The modal class is a class with the most. In this case, it's the class 89 to 97. And that's all I would write for my answer. I don't have to say the modal class is the second class, which is 89 to 97. That's all I would do. And then this is the one where I knew it was coming. The class limits of one more class was added, so I did it as I was constructing the table, but didn't put it in my table. I put it under my table just to make it so this question would have been easier to answer for me. So that's everything I need for your homework question number one. The next problem wants you to just create a frequency distribution and not ask, answer any questions about it. And this gives me the number of goals scored by, scored by the Thunderbird Chiefs soccer team for the last 14 games. Completely made this data up. You're going to make a two-column frequency distribution and it says can create a frequency distribution with class width of 1. That means just like problem, the first pro frequency distribution I did, I want one like this. Each one of these just has one number in it. It's not a range of numbers. So you're probably going to make a two-columned table. Probably it might be the number of goals scored for the first column and then the number of games they scored that many goals for the second column. So I'll just get you started with it anyways. Um, so for this Thunderbird Chief, I'm a Thunderbird graduate, that's probably why I put that there. So I'm going to probably do number of goals scored, and then the number of games that they had that many goals, and the least number of goals they had was one, so I'd probably put one first, and then all the way up through five. and then maybe a total. And then you can fill in the numbers. And that shouldn't be so hard to do.
All right, so I'm going to, uh, I'll do number four. Create a frequency distribution for the following 15 scores. And I don't know what these scores mean. So I'm just, for the left-hand column, I'm going to write scores. And then for the right-hand column, I'm going to put the number of times that score appears. If I look through my data, it's organized. The lowest score is 46. The highest score is 57. So my right-hand column, because I'm doing a no class width of 1, I need to make for every single number between 48 and 57, yuck, oh this is so tedious, Let me go off my page real quickly here I imagine, <laughs> yes. So this is the start of my frequency distribution. I didn't write frequency distribution on the top of it, but I don't have an issue with that. Now for each score, I'm going to figure out the number that had there. 46, I'm going to put a 3 next to it. 47, I'm going to put a 1 next to it. I don't see any 48, so I'm going to put a 0 next to it. For 49, I see 1. For 50, I see 2. For 51, I see 1. For 52, I don't see any. For 53, I see 1. For 54, I see 2. For 55, I don't see any. I'll write a 0. For 56, I see 3. For 57, I see 1. And I'm going to add up these numbers. They should add up to 15. So 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 11, 14, 15. And that's all I would want for that. It's not really drawn that nicely, but it doesn't need to be. All right, let's group the data and see what we can do. Uh, you can pause the video and do number five. I'll do it kind of with you real quickly here. So the number of goals scored by the Thunderbird Chiefs soccer team for the last 14 games is as follows. So I'm going to now create a frequency distribution with grouped data first class 0 to 2 goals. So for part A, for my frequency distribution, I'm going to make a two column table. The left column is going to be the number of goals. The right hand column is going to be the number of games they scored that many goals. First class is 0 to 2, so I'm going to write 0 to 2. I'm going to add 1 to 2 and get 3, and then add 2 and get 5, add 1 to 5 and get 6, and add 2 and get 8. Need to get up, that's as far as I need to get up because the 7 is the most amount of goals that they want. And then off to the side, I remind myself while I'm doing this what the next class is going to be because I'm going to need that when I get done with this. So if the next class would have started at 9, I would have added 2 and got 11. I need a row for the total. So I have the left hand column done. Now I'm going to get the right hand column. It's a little tricky. So 0 through 2, I'm going to count that, 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 that. So I just marked through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times that they scored between 0 and 2. Now I'm going to go between 3 and 5, which I'll count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's seven different ones I've just marked in blue. All of those are between 3 and 5 inclusive. And then the last one I need is between 6 and 8. I'm going to count this one and that one, and there's just two there. Now I'm going to add these up. 5 plus 7 is 12. 12 plus 2 is 14. This is the number of goals they scored over the last 14 games. So it's supposed to add up to 14, so I feel good about my work. Now I just need to answer the questions. So I did part A, that's below. Compute the total number of observations. I was told there was 14. I added up the numbers in the right-hand column. They added up to 14, so I feel good about that. To do the width of each class, you subtract any two successive numbers. So to do the width of each class, I'm going to take just the first two numbers and subtract them. I'll get an answer of 3. 
To do the midpoint of the third class, I need to know what numbers are in the left-hand column of the third class. The third ha class is a class six to eight. To get the midpoint, you add up the numbers in the class and divide by two. So I'm gonna do six plus eight over two. That's gonna be 14 over two. The midpoint of the third class is gonna be seven. The modal class is the class with the most. That's the class three to five and then find the class limits of the next class. I did that kind of off to the side. I got it done already. That's nine to 11, and that's everything we would need to do for, you would need to do for problem five. So um, problem seven wants you to make for this, anth um, the community of Anthem is planning to improve the local, a local park probably. The response responses of 18 families were asked how many times per year they how many times per year they visited the park per year whoa how many times they visited the park per year are shown below construct a frequency distribution with class with one so you're probably going to make a two column table or you're definitely going to make a two column table and what these represent are the number of families the number of times the family the 18 families went to the park so probably In the left-hand column, I need something that means the number of times they went to the park. And in the right-hand column, I need the number of families. Should add it up to 18. So when I get done with my right-hand column, should add up to 18 because there's 18 families. In the left-hand column, probably the very first thing I would write is went to the park 20 times in the year. And how many families I would put next to it, I would put three next to it. And then because I'm doing class with one, I'm not doing 20 dash something. I'm doing just 20. And then the next one's going to be 21 and so forth. Your last one's going to be 28. And then you'll just fill in the rest of the table. I'm sure you could do that. These aren't that hard. I'm just going to skip number eight because it feels kind of silly to do. Then I took something that had the same jumbled sentence. The community of Anthem is planning to improve the local park. The responses of 18 families were asked how many times per year they visited the park. Maybe that is what needs to be. How many times per year they visited the park. There's just too many per years there. Construct a frequency distribution with first class 20 through 23. Compute the total number of observations. I'll go ahead and do this. You can pause the video. This is the last problem we have to do anyways. So this is the last and the end of the section. If you want to pause the video and do it, you can. Um, if you want to watch me do it, if you're not ready to do this, you can do it as well. So let me get this started right here. So I need my frequency distribution to have two columns and I'm going to write the left hand column I'm just going to abbreviate it this time I'm going to say the number of times meaning the number of times they went to the park in that year the right hand column I'm going to make the number of families so this is going to be my answer to 9a make the first class 20 to 23 I need to get up to 32. Next class, I add one from 23 and get 24. Add three to get 27. And then 28 to 31. And last, 32 to 35. Make my total. I off to the side, figure out what the next class was gonna be, because I'm gonna ask that. The next class is gonna start at 36. I'd add 3 to get 39. That's going to be the answer probably to the last question. The, the last, if I added another class, it would be from 36 to 39. Now let me just get the numbers. For the 20 through 23, I'm going to put those five. For the 24 through 27, oh, this is so nice. I'm going to put, there's actually six there, isn't it? I'm going to put six, one, two, three, four, five, six, in for the 20 through 23, and then one, two, three, four, five, six for the 24 to 27. 
for the 28 to 31, I'm going to put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And for the 32 through 35, I'm going to put 1. I'm going to add these. They better add up to 18. So 6, 12, 17, 18. They add up to 18. Feel good about that frequency distribution. Let me answer the questions now. Compute the total number of observations. That's the number in the right-hand column was also given to me. It's going to be 18. To do the width of each class, I subtract two consecutive numbers in the table. That's 24 minus 20. That's going to be 4. This is the first time we're going to get a bi- oh, not yet. Find the midpoint of the third class. That's just going to be the third class, which is the 28 through 31. This is going to be a fraction. To do the midpoint of the third class, I add up 28 and 31 and divide by 2. On my calculator, if I want to do that in one bit, I'd go 28 plus 31 in the parentheses and then divide it by 2. I'm going to get a decimal of 29.5 as the midpoint of the third class. There, part E is where we're going to have more modal classes than one. The highest number of times, or the, no, the highest number of families in any category is a six that occurs twice. So for my modal class, I'm going to include both of those. I'm going to say the class 20 through 23 and the class 24 through 27 is, are the modal classes. We would call this bimodal, meaning it has two classes that have an equal highest number. And then the last question that I did, the next class would have been 36 through 39 if I needed to make another one, but I didn't need to make another one because I used up all the data in the classes that I have. So that's everything from this lovely section. There's a lot of really nice stuff in uh, chapter three. It's the friendliest, friendliest chapter.